This is Banjo, and today I'm going over TACAN navigation in the A10C for DCS World. TACAN will utilize the HSI to display course and deviation to the selected bearing for the station tuned onto the TACAN control panel. TACAN channel frequencies can be obtained through the navigation page of the CDU by pressing function 2 on the UFC. OSB10 will access the divert page, displaying a list of nearby airbases which we can select, displaying any TACAN or ILS stations for the airbase. TACAN channel frequencies can also be obtained through the map view in F10. TACAN channel frequencies can be obtained for any TACAN equipped airbase by selecting the airbase. We can also zoom in on an airbase on the map. We can see the icon indicating that it has a TACAN beacon and its channel frequency written below. On the right console, the TACAN operation and control panel can be located. The top is the channel display window, displaying the currently tuned TACAN channel. Below the display are the channel selector knobs, with the left knob selecting 10s and the right knob selecting 1s, and the lower half of the right knob selecting the band, which can be selected between X or Y. When the system is in operation, Morse code identifier can be heard for the selected station. The volume knob to the right of the channel display adjusts the volume of the Morse code identifier. Mode of operation is selected on the right dial below the volume knob, currently set to off. Modes of operation include receive, where you can receive bearing, course deviation, and station identification only. Transmit receive, which works as receive but also provides range information. AA receive, where the system only receives air-to-air -air bearing and the TACAN signal, used for locating tankers. And AA transmit receive, where the system provides range and bearing data between two aircraft equipped with TACAN stations. For general navigation purposes, I'll be leaving this on transmit receive for this example. TACAN range and bearing are provided on the HSI below the ADI in the center dash. Currently, it's displaying steer point information, so we'll select TACAN. At this point, we can see range and bearing to station, current heading, and course deviation displayed. Range to station is displayed on the upper left, currently half a mile. Selected course is displayed on the upper right, set to north. The course arrow represents the set course and reciprocal course in reference to the aircraft heading. When TACAN mode is enabled, bearing pointer 1 points to the magnetic bearing of the currently tuned station. The line seen currently moving is the course deviation indicator, which provides an indication of how accurately you're flying on the set course. For example, at the moment I'm parallel to the selected course, though somewhat offside of it. Just in front of the aircraft reference symbol, we can see a small little triangle that's moving front and back. This indicates whether we are flying to or from the selected station. So at this point, with the TACAN operation and control panel set up, and the HSI explained, I'll dial in the selected course I intend to fly of 345, and we'll get started. As I roll past the station, we're able to see the moment I cross over the 345 radio. The course deviation indicator will cross past me and switch from being in front of me to behind me. So once I'm up, I'm going to turn towards my selected course. Now if I turn straight for the course, I'd be running parallel to the radio rather than flying directly on the radio. So I'm going to keep turning another 45 degrees to come at it and intercept the radio at which point I'm going to turn on to my selected course. This will put me right on the radio rather than running parallel to it. One thing to note is I'm flying away from the station on 345, so I'm flying the 345 radial from the station. If I were flying the same radial but towards the station, I'd be flying the 165 bearing on the 345 radial. Altitude. Remember that a radial always radiates from the station. At this point, I'm intercepting the 345 radial from about a 45 degree angle, so it will happen fairly quickly. We can see the bearing to station rotating slowly along the left side of the HSI. Once it nears a reciprocal course of my currently selected course, I know that I'm close to intercepting the radio, so at that point I can begin my turn. As we can see, the course deviation indicator closing in on the reference symbol of the aircraft at the center of the HSI. The goal here is to fly the selected course so that the course deviation indicator centers up on the aircraft symbol. We can see I've slightly overflown it, so at this point I'm just going to steer a bit right of my course until the deviation centers up on my aircraft symbol, at which point I'll turn back on to the selected course. Now that the course deviation indicator is centered up, we can be sure that I'm flying the 345 radial from Kobuleti Airfield. At this point I'm going to tune the TACAN into the station at Sanaki Kolki, which in this case is channel 31. So as we did before, we'll go back to the TACAN operation and control panel and adjust the channel frequency selectors so that we have 31x. 
So it's at this point that I need to set a new course to land at Sanaki. So I'll be dialing in a course of 088, which will be the bearing I'm flying along the 248 radial. I'm going to intercept this radial from 90 degrees, so I'm going to steer to place the course deviation indicator broadside to my aircraft reference symbol. At this point, it's simply a matter of waiting for the bearing to station to swing around close to the set course, at which point I know the course deviation indicator is going to start slewing down towards my aircraft reference symbol, indicating that I need to make the turn onto the selected course. At this point, we can see the bearing to station is about 10 degrees off the selected course, so I can be fairly certain that I'm about to intercept the radial, so I'll begin my turn onto the selected course. And as I do, we'll see the course deviation indicator coming in towards my aircraft. The goal here is to simply hold a standard rate turn until you steer onto your selected course. If you happen to overfly the radial, don't stress about it and crank into the turn, as it's a simple matter to fly a few degrees off course till it straightens up and then turn back onto the course. And as we look up, we can see that the TACAN has led me on to final for Snack and Colt. For the final example, I'll be flying an IFR approach into Kobiladi Airfield flying bearing 123 along the 303 radial until I reach the reporting point. Then I'll fly a 7 mile DME arc until I reach the 244 radial and fly it on a bearing of 064 to final. With the TACAN channel selected, we'll dial in our selected course, in this case 123, and I'll make a turn to intercept the radial. Again, I'll be doing this at 45 degrees, although when I make a turn to intercept the radial, I will be doing it at a gentler bank angle due to the loss in visibility around me which requires me to constantly check my instruments. Once I center up the course deviation indicator with my aircraft and I'm sure I'm flying on the selected course, I'll wait for the range to reach about 8 miles at which point I'll turn perpendicular to the selected course. This will be the point where I enter the DME arc, at which point I will keep range constant to the station. And I'll do this by continually setting a new course for 10 degrees less than my current course, flying to be perpendicular to that radial, and intercepting it and repeating the process. This will cause my aircraft to start flying an arc around the station at 7 miles until I reach the desired radial. If I find range is increasing to the station, I'll tighten up the turn, and if I find range decreasing to the station, I'll widen the turn. I'm going to repeat this until my course setter rests on 064 at which point I'll turn in and start flying a course of 064 along the 244 radio. This will set me up on the approach course for Kobiladi Airfield, allowing me to activate my ILS and come in for a landing. At this point, we'll skip ahead to the final turn. Rather than dialing back just 10 degrees, I dial it all the way to the final approach, which is 064. So at this point, I will fly so that it's perpendicular to my aircraft, although, rather than overflying the radio, I will turn into the selected course and this will place me on my final approach course to land at Kobuleti. As the course deviation indicator starts slewing in towards the aircraft symbol, I begin the turn onto 064. Again, it doesn't matter if I overfly the radio, as I'm 7 miles from the airbase, I have plenty of time to straighten it up, so I'll just hold a standard rate turn until I reach the course that I have set. The important things to remember when flying the arc are to keep your range to the station constant and to monitor your airspeed and vertical speed in an effort to keep them constant. It's at this point that I'm within a degree or two of being centered up on my course, so I could activate the ILS and begin a landing. At this point we can verify the position on F10 and see that we are indeed on final approach for Kobuleti Airfield.